Hi. So I'm here to speak about uh, the CentOS uh, Community Build Service. I try to present uh, this uh, service, how we build it, and uh, what is it used for. Uh, my name is Thomas. I will present uh, this talk with uh, Brian. He will take over after a few minutes uh, to show you some live demo if everything works, hopefully. <laughs> so, quick word on me. I'm uh, Alpha CC on Freenode. If you're looking for me later for talking on the mailing list, uh, I'm a service manager at CERN. I did a bit of OpenStack in the past. Now I'm doing Koji and uh, I'm still doing a bit of scientific Linux. I'm part of the, uh, of the main team that is doing uh, scientific Linux CERN. Um, and uh, all the usual stuff uh, you're doing where you're kind of system administrator, um, puppetization, migration to the new version. Uh, as people ask uh, if, we, if you want uh, a job, you can go there and there's a few. And if you are a student, there's a lot of possibility uh, to work for CERN, to have uh, fun. So please do. Uh, the agenda is like that. We'll start a quick introduction, then I'll present Koji. Uh, that we use uh, for the building system. Uh, I'll present how we do repository. Uh, I'll speak about signing. Uh, it's not uh, completely there yet, but we are working on it, so it should be uh, uh, ready in a few weeks. And uh, finally, Brian will talk about uh, send PKG. I'll come back to that later. So the main use case for the build uh, service uh, was one to build uh, RPMs. So we wanted uh, all the special interest group to be able to contribute uh, to the community. So we need a central service to build all the RPMs. We started to build from source RPM, but the ultimate goal is to build everything from uh, a Git repository. Um, the second step was to distribute RPM. So of course, when you build them, you want to install them and test them. So this is the second step. Uh, short term, we, do that, we did that for all the dev and the testers. And long term, we want to have an automatic workflow that signs the RPM and distributes it uh, somewhere accessible to user. We are not completely done with this step. I'll come back to that a bit later. But uh, it's a matter of few, few weeks. Um, this is a schema of uh, what the first thing I did when I designed a, a Koji a service around Koji. So this is what a user wants. A user wants, wants to build a package, then know when it's done, and then install it on his machine. So thi this was uh, basically the main use case. For reaching our goals, we have basically three main components, which is Git. A uh, CentOS project is using git blit as a git, um, as a git uh, service, so you can read a bit about uh, this software over there. If you have more questions, uh, uh, we have a few persons that know it better than me around and that can answer. Uh, we use Koji, so Koji is what Fedora and Apple is using. Uh, we wanted to keep uh, an, exp an experience close to what Fedora is using to be able to build package so people don't have to relearn everything. So this is a well-known tool from uh, the Fedora community. <coughs> and uh, finally, MASH uh, allow to generate repository directly from Koji and uh, looking out, we tag them. I'll come back to the detail later. So the conversion of Koji now, uh, there's four main components, which is the Koji Hub, which basically um, abstract Postgres and the file system uh, hierarchy for you. It's a XML RPC uh, that is run by mod WSGI. You have the Koji Builder that are the main, uh, the main uh, components, the main uh, that are doing the action. Basically, you have this task, and uh, they are run by the Koji Builder. So when you create a new RPM, it will run by one of the builder. At this time, we have three of them uh, for CentOS. Um, we will be working on putting more if we need, but for the moment it's far enough for the workload we have. Kojira is a small uh, tool that keeps all the repo updated, so it's internal mainly for Koji. Each time you have a new package build, it will be added to a new internal repo, so it's able, it, so Koji can see it to do chain building, for example. So if you build a package that depends on another package, then you can. Uh, you can. Uh, you don't need to do anything because Kojira is managing that for you. You just uh, need to send the package in the order you want to build them. Uh, the clients. So there's two clients. There's a web interface uh, and a command line tool. I'll show you a few screenshots right now. 
so this is the, the main uh, web interface. This show you what kind of target we have uh, for CentOS. You have a uh, host uh, tab as well. So you can see all the builders that are ready, not ready, enabled, and not enabled. And finally, if you want to see what builds have been done recently, you can go to the build tab and it will show you that uh, people build uh, all these components, uh, all these packages. For the CLI, I'll just show you quickly now uh, how it goes. I'll give you, I'll explain each command later, but basically, if you need to build a package, it will be around three commands. But you need to know a bit about uh, the uh, the Koji um, the Koji uh, naming of different uh, of different action. So I will go in details now for that in Koji 101. So there are a lo lot of different terms to to describe Koji. So please bear with me. I have a full example on the next slide. It will be easier to understand. But uh, I will just say it quickly. So basically, Koji has different tags, which are uh, where the package end up. Then you have uh, external repo, which are uh, all the <coughs> repository that we use to build. So mainly CentOS 7 OS update extra, CentOS 6 OS update extra. All uh, these uh, repository are defined in Koji. Uh, a build tag, so it's a tag um, where you define uh, which package you want in your build route. Uh, a target, so a target has a build route, uh, a build tag, and a destination tag. So it says, okay, when I send the package to this target, it will be built with this build route, and as a destination, it will go to, for example, Cloud 7 release or testing. Um, a package, uh, it's an RPM name, so GCC, for example. Uh, build is uh, the result build uh, from uh, source RPM or Git. So it can be gc 44 one this tag. And finally, there's two actions that a uh, user may have to do is to tag and untag a package. So basically, you can assign to a repository or unassign a package. This is mainly what it means. Uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, an example a bit later. So, uh, more naming convention. We needed uh, to have some convention to be sure that it's not end up in a mess to have different SIG because um, for, for Fedora, they have a bit less target because they don't have to change disk tags, they don't have to build software collection yet. So we tried to, to come with a, a way to define uh, build tags, targets, and destinations that make sense. So I won't go in all details because I think I will lost you. But uh, if uh, it was discussed on the CentOS Devel mailing list, uh, we agree on this kind of um, of uh, naming. And so far, we didn't have any issue with it. So if uh, if you want more details about that, I can show you. We did um, we did uh, I wanted to show you yeah, okay. Um, I have a full example to show you how you work with Koji. So when uh, you subscribe to a SIG and then you want to start to contribute that uh, your membership has been, uh, you will get uh, a certificate and you will be able to use the command line. Um, you can do basically uh, operation to add package to a different, um, so let's say you want to build OpenStack Lens, so you need to add it where you want to build, and then you need to send uh, a Git URL where you have uh, your package uh, name. After that, your package will appear directly in testing, so you will be able to consume it from a repository that is generated automatically by us. And uh, when you are happy with the package and you want to make it release, uh, release ready, you can just tag the build uh, like that. Um, I, wa I wanted to, to describe a bit uh, the build target. What is a build target? So a build target, as I mentioned before, is composed by a destination tag. So it will be the default uh, destination tag where your package will end up. You have some external repo where you have all the dependencies needed. And then you have a build tag. A build tag on top of that has two different uh, build routes you can define. One from the source RPM if you want to build from source RPM and one that is for the git builds. When you have a build tag in, uh, in Koji, you can see that uh, you have all the details. 
you have the number of packages that has been associated to this tag, the number of builds, and uh, you can see uh, all the external repo and inheritance. We do some inheritance on the testing tag uh, to allow chain building. So if you want uh, to build a package that depends on each other, you won't have to do anything. It will be done for you by Kojira, as I mentioned before. Uh, then <coughs> I wanted to show you uh, the result uh, build. So you can see who built it. You can see when it started, how long it took. Um, you can see where it's tagged right now. And uh, finally, you can have the detail of the ERPM. You can even download the ERPM directly from here to have a look. Uh, you have a nice feature as well, is the build log uh, link. So you can see uh, all detail of what was done in mock and uh, in, uh, in the checkout of the Git, for example. So you have access to all the logs, it's quite uh, open and you can, uh, you can check it. And one nice thing is the change log. It's really handy to have the change log in there, so you don't have to, sometimes you just want to check what was this package about, and it's quite uh, useful. I use it all the time as well on Fedora, on kojifedoraproject.org. It's very handy. Uh, administration, so we made a little script uh, to put together all this naming issue and how to build uh, a new SIG. So basically you can check the code, it's uh, some bash, it's really easy and you should be able to adapt it to your need if you want to, to do some Koji uh, in-house. Um, nothing uh, very special here. It's available, yeah, I wanted to mention, it's available on the CDS tool uh, Git repo. So if you want to see, please uh, just connect and have a look. Um, now I wanted to speak a bit about the integration with Git. Um, so this is a workflow, so a user wants to commit to Git, then a user submits a Git URL to the build system, then the builder receives the jobs. Koji Builder executes a Git clone from this URL. Then we have a specific command to get the binary source uh, for all the packages. Uh, so there's some magic, it's the same, it's available at the CBS, uh, CBS tools and the git CentOS uh, git command, sorry, CentOS git command. So you can have a look to this script if needed. Basically it's look uh, for binary package on a look aside cache, download them and then you are able to <coughs> have all your source needed for building the RPM. Uh, and the final step of course is to build uh, the source RPM that has been generated like that. Um, so everything is available uh, in uh, the build sys tool package that we build in Koji. So if you want to have a look as well, you can just download that or go to Git to have uh, all uh, the tools. The mash workflow now. So when you did all that, what you need to do is basically to distribute the RPM in an ICM repository so an user, tester, and everybody can, uh, can grab them. So every time you build the RPM in Koji, 10 minutes later, it will appear in a testing repository. So you will be able to consume it quite uh, quickly. So you can build some things and you will be able to test, install on your dev machine, do some stuff. And then when you're happy, you can basically tag it to a new tag and uh, it will be the dash release tag and uh, it will appear. Uh, the dash release repository are um, not automatically signed yet. We are working on that, so I hope we get that soon. And, uh, but we already sign it manually and push it to some uh, different server. So if you want the details, uh, I, can, uh, I can show you uh, a bit later. I wanted to show you how MASH works. So in MASH, you define basically a target and then you have different options. So the important one uh, are if you want the debug info packages, if you want the multi-lib packages, uh, you associate the Koji tag. So this is the important part. So it will say that all the package, all the RPMs that are tagged, all the builds, sorry, that are tagged in Cloud Sys release will be taken for this repository. Uh, you can check uh, the key, uh, the GPT key if you want, and uh, you can specify Arch if you want to have uh, only one Arch. For example, for seven, you have only x86-64. And uh, as well, you can generate a Delta RPM if needed. So then 
I wanted to mention what we did. So it's a whole team, it's not me only. Huh? There's a lot of people working on that. So thanks to them. Uh, we did a lot of user training. So when people come uh, to a more standard world where some people didn't know about mock, didn't know about RPM build, so we have to show them how it works. And as Koji is, uh, is a nice interface on top of that, it's quite uh, easy to use, but still you have to grab the concept. So don't be scared. Uh, we are working on making it better, and uh, Brian will show you uh, send PKG that uh, will emulate uh, something like Fed PKG to have all this uh, step automat automati automatized, sorry. So <coughs> you don't have to remember uh, all the Koji command uh, if you just want to do uh, some builds. Um, we sent some few patches to Koji to support different layouts than Fedora. Uh, all patches are upstream now, thanks to Mike. Um, the lookaside cache, so a way to upload binary, uh, so we don't have binary in Git, binary are on the lookaside cache. So the code uh, to put that in production is, al is also available in, um, in CBS tool, you can have a look. Uh, Jan helped us to do the image factory support, so we are able in Koji to build some Docker or atomic image. This is what we use now to, to have the, the test images. Uh, we did add new builder, uh, thanks to Fabian, we had uh, some uh, puppet, um, we had some puppet magic and now builder are quite easy to, to spin up, so it will be good for the future if we need to add more. Uh, send PKG, so I'll let Brian speak a bit more about that later. And uh, the last thing I'm doing right now is investiga investigate uh, signing, so signing Fedora has a nice solution called Seagull that allow you uh, to sign in uh, an efficient and secure way uh, from different machines. So you have different components, you have a server that uh, has the key, and then you have some bridge where you can send uh, all the needed requests, and it will sign uh, the RPMs. Uh, you, you, you never communicate directly with the server, and this can be uh, isolated, and you can limit by firewall or anything else you want. So you don't put your key at risk. Uh, we are working on that. We are not 100% sure about how we will integrate this workflow, but it's it looks a really nice tool, and uh, as Fedora uses it for a long time, uh, we are quite confident about it. I just wanted to show you a few comments how it works. So there's two ways. You can sign a package uh, locally, or you can do use Koji. So, well, nothing fancy here, just uh, come online. And uh, basically, there is uh, some possibility to do some callback in Koji, so we will have a callback that calls this command uh, when you finish to build a package. This has been tested uh, by many people around, so it should be fine. I will now uh, just give a few words about uh, what is send PKG and leave Brian continue on that. So this PKG, send PKG, as I mentioned, uh, is the same is close to Fed PKG. It has less feature now, but we are working on it. And it's a way to interact with all this technology so user uh, don't need to learn all the details. So. Okay. So I thought I'd go ahead and just show this off a little bit. And if I can put this on my shirt. There we go. Um, <coughs> I'll show you a, a couple of websites that, um, where you can get more information from Scent Package. It's a, um, I basically took a lot of this stuff from Fedora because there's a, um, a project already out there called R Package. That's the library that does the actual, um, the, all of the glue behind the scenes that, that need to, um, that are needed to make this work. Uh, that's already open source in Fedora, and we were able to just use it and modify it to our layout and, and other things in uh, CentOS. So if you go to git.centos.org slash summary slash sentpackage.git, that's the development repository for what we have. And um, the, the nice thing is if, if you're interested in contributing there, um, we're, we're pretty good about accepting uh, patches and all that stuff. On the wiki, if you're looking to get started, there's a how-to page. Um, 
And right now, we're just recommending sent package for um, testing purposes only. We're not quite ready to do a release yet because we're still working out some of the details um, that, that we need to modify for our use case in CentOS. But if you want to go through the, the install process, we have a, a walkthrough here that'll, that'll get you there. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of show you how sent package works. So Thomas mentioned that when you want to build a package in Koji, you, you sort of have to know a few things. You have to know um, beforehand the, um, you have to know the, the target that you're going to build it into. You have to know the entire Git URL, including the SHA hash of, uh, of the commit that you want to use. And that's sometimes a little bit tricky to get because you have to go through a, a lot of different operations to find that. So what sent package does is it sort of automates that process for you. Um, I have, um, let's see if we can make this bigger for you. Yeah, I have checked out here a copy of A2PS. Um, this is just a, a package that, that shipped with the CentOS 7 distribution. Um, what I have here is each directory represents one of the branches in our, our Git repository. So we have a C6, a C6 plus, C7. Um, those correspond to the distribution releases. Right now we only have content in, in C7, um, but that represents what actually shipped out in the distribution. So if we head into, we have, the original A2PS spec. And that's a lot of text, you don't need to care about that. But um, <clears throat> the idea is, once you have a SIG and you get your, your branch created, let's say that you, you created um, your own SIG and you wanted to uh, build your own version of A2PS to ship in your repo, we would create the, um, the git branch for you. And that allows us to do a lot of things because each of these git branches matches to a Koji build target. So I know in C7 there's a particular build target on Koji that I'm always going to build um, packages in that branch to. And that's, that's sort of what sent package does is it consolidates all of that information and, and gives you um, sort of the, the syntactic sugar to, uh, to do all that. So if I wanted to kick off a build, here I am in the C7 branch. I just type sent package build, and it knows which Koji to, to contact. That would be the one for the CentOS project. It knows the, um, it knows the, the canonical Git URL, including the, the entire hash, and it knows which target to send it to. Now, I don't want to go ahead and, I don't want to tag this into um, any of the, the targets right now, so I'm just going to do a scratch build, and basically what that does is it, it, uh, it builds it on Koji, but then it doesn't put it in any of the repos that are going to get shipped out. And I'm going to go ahead and start that, and it's probably going to take a while. I'm not sure. I may be connected. Yeah, here we go. So you can see it's creating this task here, and this is evident on the web page that Thomas showed off. So you can see right here, there's an active build going on um, for A2PS coming from that git build hash. So that's, that's the core workflow of sent package right now is you know, checking things out from Git and then just building them in Koji. Now there's some other methods that, um, that will be coming soon, like working with um, how do you actually get stuff out to your production or to the uh, release repositories once you're ready. Because right now everything is automatically tagged first into, into the testing repositories. And that's something that I think sent package could probably do in the future. Um, I know Fedora does that with their updates process and um, it interacts with, with a lot of their systems. So I'm looking forward to, um, 
to sort of building out Scent Package a little bit and adding, um, you know, implementing the, th the things that are already there, but also adding on functionality for the project itself. So if you're, if you're interested in, in helping out with that, like I said, the CentOS project is incredible about accepting contributions. So I was, I, I started off, I um, sort of put up a couple of files on the mailing list in, I think it was June or July, and suddenly here I am speaking in front of all of you. So it's, uh, it, I, I really enjoyed the process getting here so far, and um, I hope that we can work together to make some cool tools for the, the CentOS SIGs. Um, so for right now, I think uh, we've got a few minutes left so that we can take questions on either side um, for the build system or send package or anything you like. Yeah. So what is it about the send package that? R package? Um, well, so send package is, it, it, it's an R package site. Um, so we, we consume it directly. Um, we're, we're in the process, we would like, um, there, there are some features that don't match well with the CentOS project um, tools. So we're working on um, maybe modifying that and seeing if we can get that upstream. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, so there, um, the the R package devs are they're they're sort of active on um, on that, but you know I think it's I think R package could be a good community point for that because there, there are a lot of, um, of R package sites out there. Um, people who are using it, you know, at their workplace or, or something like that. Um, uh, it's, it's definitely an opportunity to, um, to see if we can get together to make some of those changes that you're talking about. I think we are still evaluating that because this is a valid point. Maybe we, we, we will sign all the packages that are ending up in testing with a separate key. And for the release, we will have a key uh, that uh, we sign a bit more manually, maybe, like a uh, few times a day or something like that. But uh, we didn't decide, so if you have strong opinion, please uh, come to us and we can discuss it. There's many ways to do it. Uh, at work, as I don't have the the same uh, the same issue, I sign everything uh, with different key. But I sign everything uh, as soon as it's built. Uh, maybe it's not the best way to do it. And uh, as we didn't decide yet for the CentOS uh, community, um, we are looking for input on that. If you have good ideas. Nobody else. Okay. So at this point for Koji, we don't share that many tools. So, uh, Fermilab is, uh, oh, is uh, using Koji as well for rebuilding. So we were part. We are still part of this effort for five and six. I'm still involved a lot uh, because we're still using five and six a lot. This is our main distribution uh, at Sun. Seven is quite new for us, and uh, as you know, we are not uh, the guy that moves the fastest to the new version because we have a lot of. Uh, of uh, users that uh, would have stayed on four if they could. <laughs> so now we have uh, mainly um, CentOS, Sand uh, Figlus 5 and 6, and uh, we decided to join effort with CentOS 7 for the development to join a bigger community. But uh, Fermilab is continuing their development on Scientific Linux. So I don't have much information on that, but I know they are using Koji as well. Uh, in terms of sharing tool, uh, we, we put 
all the tool we had uh, almost uh, inside CERN in the CentOS, uh, CentOS Git. So it's mainly the same tools that I use at work and now I adapt for, for the CentOS community. Nothing else? Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>